Hi, welcome to this video on how to write the perfect letter. This is for the GCSE English language writing exam. We're looking at the WeJet board. This will be for any exam board as a lot of exams you can get a letter. So to get a C in our letter and above, we need a minimum to have capital letters, full stops and commas sorted. We need to know our there, there and there's or homophones. We need to do an apostrophes. Okay, and the following will impress. So using a colon and semicolons will impress the examiner. De Forest and advanced sentence starters. We're going to be looking at the things we need to impress later on in the video. So remember, we want to impress the examiner. We want to do our commas. We want to do all the things we should be doing. But also we want to use a few more things to make sure we get really high grades. If you don't get your capital letters and your commas and your apostrophes and your there, there and there's, you're really going to struggle like these guys on the photo. So you need to get the basics to get a C grade. In the letter, there's a few things we have to do, one of which is form. So that means things like where our addresses go on the letter, how we finish the letter, and we'll be looking at that in the video later on. We're also going to look at using linguistic devices. This is from the mark scheme. This and band 4 is in the higher mark so to get a C we've got to get the correct form we've got to use linguistic devices and we're going to talk about De Forest later in the video so just to give you an example this is a student's work I would be expecting you to do about this in your exam remember you've got to do two questions but for your letter I will be saying you should do this amount remember it's two pages but you should have two addresses on there so that will take up room so this is the minimum you should be doing really okay so the question we're going to look at for our a grade or our model letter in this video is this one last weekend you had to travel by train the journey was disastrous and ruined your day you decide to write a letter of complaint to the train company making a convincing case for a full refund write your letter it's out of 20 marks and then just a bit of a device it says the quality of your writing is more important than its length you should write about one or two pages in your answer book okay although i do agree that quality is really important i would i would really really not advise writing one page in your exam you should be looking at definitely the two sides okay so let's look at the structure of a letter how we're going to set it out so in the top right hand corner you should have your address. They probably won't give you the address for you in the exam. In fact, they won't. So you've just got to make up an address. So it doesn't really matter. As long as you do street, town, county, and postcode, you'll be fine. Okay. Then we would need the date. In a formal letter, say, for example, if it was 6th of June 2016, we wouldn't put 6 6 16. We would write the date out in full. So 6th of June 2016. Then you need the recipient's name and address, so the address you're writing to. Again, you probably won't get it in the exam. If you do, copy it out. But if not, just use your brain. So, for example, in this case, we would write to the train company and you could make up an address. Then we need the name of polite greeting. If you don't have the name of the person, put dear sir or madam. The S of sir and the M of madam should be um, capital letters. If you are given a name, put the name so one thing students do do wrong if they were getting the name saying John Smith for example they would put dear John Smith so it should be dear Mr Smith with a comma then in our introduction one or two sentences you're going to explain why you're writing then you're going to have your first main point your second main point and your third main point so in the letter of complaint to a train company the first main point could be the staff are rude the second main point could be the trains was late and the third main point could be that the toilets were disgusting for example it's really important in your letter and this is where a lot of students go wrong they will shove five or six reasons in one big paragraph it's all cluttered it all looks a bit of a mess it's really important that you do one point Go into detail on that one point. So one point about the staff being rude, write four or five sentences. Your second main point about the toilets being disgusting, write four or five sentences on that. Your third main point about the train being late, write four or five sentences on that. Okay. Then you're going to do action paragraph, which is a posh name for basically the conclusion of your letter, meaning what do you want to happen from sending this letter. You don't just want them to read it and then they pull it in the bin. You want an action to come from this. So this could be you want them to apologise, you want a refund, whatever. Okay. And then you're going to put yours faithfully or yours sincerely. If it's yours faithfully, it's, you're going to have dear sir or madam. But if you put the name of the person, for example, dear Mr. Smith, you would say sincerely, and then you would just put your name at the end. 
capital letters on the first and surname, obviously. Okay, so start and end, just to sort of go over it again, just so we make sure, because a lot of students will get this wrong and you might lose a mark. If you know the person's name, so dear Mr. Smith, for example, you start with dear the person's name, so you start with dear Mr. Smith. And if you know their name, you end with your sincerely. If you don't know the person's name, start with dear sir or madam and end with yours faithfully. Remember, you only need the capital, capital letter on the Y of yours. You don't need it on the F of faithfully or the F of sincerely. Okay, again, remember, just really important, one point per paragraph. Do not put lots of points in the big chunks. So a lot of students do it. So just remember, one point per paragraph. If you put loads of points in one paragraph, this is what will happen to you in the exam. You're going to get marked down, you're going to fail a little bit of the exam. So really make sure that you stick to one point per paragraph. Okay, let's look at the question again. Um, you write a letter of complaint because you went on a chain journey, it was disastrous, and it's asked you to make a convincing case for a full refund. So, first of all, in your letter, you should take two or three minutes, or one or two minutes in the exam, to do a plan. You won't technically get a mark in your in the exam for doing a plan however every exam I see they tend to give it a mark so if no even though it's not in the rules the examiner sees that because you're planning it you're thinking about it they tend to give you a mark okay so you're not going to be writing down loads of loads in the plan you're just going to write down four or five bullet points and the main points that you're going to talk about so talking about my letter of complaint I'm just going to put number one the addresses that I need to write both addresses number two I'm going to say my next part, my first paragraph is going to be why I'm writing, and then I'm just going to put down the main points per paragraph. So um, first of all, I'm going to say my first main point of my um, complaint is that they put me in the wrong seat. My second main point is that the train was really messy, and my third main point is that the train was really loud. I'm not writing all of these in one paragraph. I'm going to do one seat for the wrong, one paragraph for the wrong seat, one paragraph for the messy train, and one paragraph for how loud it was. And then my last paragraph is just going to be I want a refund, and that's how I'm going to leave the letter. So again, the plan is not a paragraph. It's not loads and loads of things. It's just six bullet points telling me what order I'm going to do my letter in. Okay, so here is my letter, the model answer, the A grade letter. Okay, you can see it's structured properly. It's quite a lot on the computer. I would say for this on you writing this with a pen, it would be just over two pages, okay? So we're gonna read through the letter now. If you wanna read it on your own, pause the video, otherwise I'll read it through. Okay, so there's the um, addresses on the top. I made up my own address, and then for their address, I've put Bournemouth Train Company, Bournemouth Dorset, BH1, 1AP. So I made that completely up. There's not a company by that name. However, I'm writing to the train company, so I've just made it really simple. Dear Madam, I'm writing to inform you of my total disgust at the dreadful journey which I suffered on one of your trains last weekend. Let me get straight to the point. The service was utterly appalling, and I wish to request a full refund. Firstly, my train ticket for this awful journey was booked a long time in advance. I had reserved a seat in the quiet carriage and did not want a table. Boarding the train, I found to my annoyance that your staff had decided to place my reserved ticket in a different seat. I could not bring myself to ask the heavily pregnant woman who had taken my seat to swap, so I had to place myself next to the foul toilet. Why should I have to do this? Stupidly, I had paid extra to reserve my seat. I was furious. Secondly, I was shocked by the state the train had been left in by previous passengers. 95% of the floor was covered by fast food, drink and newspapers, while my seat had a stinky stain on it. Revolted and repulsed, I had no choice but to sit on it due to the train being so overcrowded. How often is the train meant to be cleaned? It is my expectation that the mess should be cleaned up by the train staff and not for the next pair and passenger to sit on. Finally, the quiet carriage on your train was far from peaceful. Rowdy children, screaming babies and drunken football fans were all competing to see who could be the loudest. Quickly, I was rudely disturbed by a group of teenagers who were throwing lager cans and verbally abusing most of the patient passengers. After complaining to the guard, I was informed that there's nothing we can do and a number of member of staff suggested I should stop complaining. Around 50% of the passengers I spoke to were so fed up they terminated their journey early. How can you justify the £85 ticket for such a pathetically poor journey? Surely you wish to provide an exceptional service. Sadly, you failed on this occasion. 
Due to these problems caused by your charitable train service, I expect a full refund. I should not have to spend my hard-earned money on your atrocious service, which ruined my day and left me feeling exhausted and tired. Yours faithfully, Ambreen Sadiq. Okay, so there's my letter again. So it was really, although it seems quite a lot, it was actually quite simple, wasn't it? I did a very simple intro saying I want my refund. Then I just did three points. They put me in the wrong seat. The train was messy and the quiet carriage was really noisy. Really simple. And then I've done a saying goodbye and I want a refund and for them to get back to me. If we look at the structure that we looked at a second ago, but this time I've put my letter in the middle of it. So, writer's address was 10 Christchurch Road. Then I had their address that I made up. Then I had the date, so I didn't have 10th for the 4th, 17. I had 10th of April 2017, because it's a formal letter. Then I wasn't given a name in the question, so I'm going to put Dear Sarah or Madam. Then I'm saying why I'm writing, because at my disgust at the journey, I want a refund. Then I did four or five sentences on my first main point, which was that I booked a train ticket in a particular seat and they gave me, didn't give me the right one. Then again, I'm going to do four or five sentences on my second main point, which is that the train was really messy. Then again, I'm going to do four or five sentences on my third main point, was that the train was meant to be quiet, but it was really, really loud. And then in my action paragraph, I'm saying that I want a full refund. That's what I want to happen from this letter. Then because I did Dear Sir or Madam, I put yours faithfully, and then I did my name. Really, really simple. Okay, so if you want a copy of this, have a look on bpcenglish.wordpress.com and um, you get a copy of this structure and the PowerPoint. Okay, so letter form. So when it said earlier on about letter form, it meant the structure of the letter and how the letter looks. And you will get marks in the exam for doing this correctly. So you don't want to be this woman here, almost getting whacked by the train. You want to be on it and doing it correctly. So if we look at letter form, first of all, we have the addresses okay so we have the addresses we have my address top right we have their address slightly lower on the left and then we have the date dear sir or madam I don't know the name of the person and I've got a couple of capital S capital M for madam then I've got a comma afterwards remember do that I've seen plenty of exams where people put dear sir or madam they don't put a comma and the examiner picks up on it okay I'm writing to you but but it's indented, so that's why I've highlighted this one. So it's put a little bit in the page, so make sure you do that. And then I've just done the correct yours faithfully. So remember, if I would have put dear Mr. Mrs. Jones, I'd put yours sincerely. And remember, if you know the person's name, dear Mr. Smith, you end up sincerely. If you don't know the name, like in my letter, dear Sarah and Madam, yours faithfully. Okay, just remember... It seems an obvious point, but a lot of students do forget it. Check your capital letters in your address. Okay, What students tend to do is, if you look at the address in the top right hand corner, for Christchurch, they always put a capital C, so they will get an address for, say if it was um, Kings Avenue, they will have a capital K for Kings, but they forget to do the A for an avenue. So make sure if you put road, the road has to have a capital R as well. Remember, all letters in the postcode should have capital letters and name of a company should have capital letters as well also 10th of april 2017 remember every single month you would ever put always has a capital letter too okay so why are you writing so if we look at the intro okay so why are you writing we want to make our intro short and snappy what we don't want to do in the intro is give any reasons why the train journey was so awful so in your in your intro we're not going to say the train was messy or anything like that we're just going to give our intentions a couple of sentences why we're writing the letter okay a lot of students do sort of do this face in the exam or in my classes a little bit because they don't know how to start at almost starting the letter or starting any document a speech report article review startling it always seems to be the trickiest part okay so remember here's our question again so one way of doing our introduction is using phrases from the title um, from the question to help us so here's my intro again dear sir or madam i'm writing to inform you of my total disgust at the dreadful journey which i suffered on one of your trains last weekend let me get straight to the point the service was utterly appalling and i wish to request a full refund so if you look at the question it says last weekend i've got last weekend in my introduction 
It says the journey was disastrous and ruined your day. You decide to write a letter of complaint to the train company, making a convincing case for a full refund. And then the last part of my introduction says full refund. Okay, so I've used parts of the question to help me along. What I've also done is I've used the phrase, let me get straight to the point. I think you could almost use this for any article in the writing exam, apart from maybe the report. Let me get straight to the point is a really good, really good phrase because it's really blunt but it does the job it does exactly what you need to do in the question we don't want to waffle in the introduction we want to make two really short sentences and let me get straight to the point colon almost sets up so remember we can use a colon almost for like an important statement it almost gives attention to the last part of the sentence so let me get straight to the point brings attention to the service was utterly appalling and I wish to request a full refund so it makes the introduction well but also the colon will also bump up your spelling, punctuation, accuracy and grammar grades to the examiner. So if they see you using a colon in the introduction, they will think, oh wow, this, this person knows what they're doing. It's absolutely fine to start your introduction with, I am writing to you. That's absolutely fine. A lot of students find this easy to do this, this way, so feel free to do it. Okay, so how are we going to impress the examiner? So it said in the mark scheme earlier on, we need to use stylistic devices. So this is really going to push your grades up. So we want to be as confident using DeForest as this guy here is in the image. Okay, one way to impress the examiner is by pretending to care. Okay, so like this guy really be, being emotionally involved. Okay, so what I mean by that is whatever the question is that's thrown at you, care deeply about it. Why? Well, because if you pretend to care just for 45 minutes or an hour, it will show in your writing. I realise that many of you in this in this video, we don't care about trains. It's not a particularly exciting topic. But if you pretend that you do, it will make your writing far more impressive. Okay, another tip is that it is okay to cheat. Okay, so what I mean by that is obviously you're not going to copy the person's neck to you. But what I mean is that you can lie, make stuff, exaggerate in your letter. So by putting made up facts, figures, statistics and quotations into your writing, it makes the writing seem far more interesting and convincing. No one cares if you're telling the truth or not. So the examiner, if you put a statistic in your, in your answer, the examiner at home is not going to start going on Google or Wikipedia to check it. So here's an example. As 50% of the men on the train were bold, the windy weather gave them a lot to complain about. Okay, So obviously that's a little bit daft, but given a percentage does make it seem more convincing and more interesting and almost like it has a bit of fact by it. So if you ever see those adverts where it will say 95% of dentists think this toothpaste is the best one. So if you put a bit of sort of knowledge, a bit of statistics behind it, it seems your answer is a bit more credible. Okay, another tip, don't be afraid to be over the top. Um, we're going to be over top by using DeForest. Okay, so you may have done this before in lessons with your English teacher, but here is DeForest. So it's direct address, so referring to the reader using we or you. Iteration, a group of words beginning with the same letter or sound. Facts, something which can be proven to be true. Opinions, a belief which can, cannot be proven to be true, someone's own ideas. Rhetorical question, any question in the piece of writing which doesn't require an answer. Emotive language, words which elicit a powerful response. Statistics, facts and data used to support a point, we talk, just talked about it. Or rule of three or power of three, list of three things in a sentence. So they do this a lot in adverts. So for example, Mars bar makes you work, rest and play. Okay, so here's the forest again, but here, I'm now going to show you the ones that I used in my letter. And you should be using whatever letter question you get in the exam. Try to do a little DeForest plan before you get going. We're going to get rid of fact and opinion because, to be honest, a lot of what you say is going to be fact and opinion or anywhere in the letter. So we probably don't need to plan this one because a lot of it's going to be opinion, a lot of it's going to be facts. So, for example, I went on the train last weekend would be a fact. An opinion would be I didn't like your service. So that's going to happen anyway. So... Direct address, remember that's using you or we. Sadly, you failed on this occasion. So you makes it sound like the letter is going directly to the person. It's going to be more effective. So sadly, you failed on this occasion and on this letter to um, do a good service. So alliteration, which makes the text catchy and sticks in the reader's head. Pathetically poor journey. Rhetorical question, how can you justify the £85 ticket for such a pathetically poor journey? Emotive language. 
total disgust at the dreadful journey so i could have put i didn't like the journey wasn't very good but disgust and dreadful really make it sound awful and really stick in the reader's head statistics around 50 percent of the passengers i spoke to were so fed up they terminated their journey early rule of three the floor was covered by fast food drink and newspaper so the mark scheme says to get the high grades you need to use stylistic devices so here we've got six so six really good sentences that all the way through the, the letter the examiner can see we know how to do stylistic devices we know how to use the forest basically it's going to be a really really good letter but if you use these devices i would also talking about the plan I would also, once you get going, only spend one or two minutes on it, I would do a little plan of the forest. So just write down D-A-F-O-R-E-S-T in a line down your page and see if you can really quickly, one minute, just come up with quotes for each one that you're going to use in your letter. So if we go back to the letter, okay, see if you can find some of the forest. Pause the video now if you want to do it, if not, carry on. So here... With the magic we can see the, the forest that we've got here so my blue is emotive language so disgust dreadful utterly appalling awful foul furious atrocious exhausted and stressed so atrocious is a lot more a lot more effective than bad it's also more advanced vocabulary you're going to get better marks dreadful is a lot better than not very good furious is better than angry so pushing yourself with with this emotive language more advanced vocabulary is going to get you better grades so i've got a couple of rhetorical questions why should i have to do this how often is the train meant to be cleaned how can you justify the ticket price surely you wish to provide an exceptional service so maybe four is a little bit too much but two or three during two pages will look really good so i've got a couple of statistics 95 percent of the floor was covered by fast food 50 percent of the passengers terminated their germany because they were so fed up again using data to back up your point makes it sound like absolute fat and like it absolutely happened so really would convince the reader okay i've got power of three a few times the floor was covered by fast food drink newspapers one two three and rowdy children one screaming babies two drunken football fans three were all competing so you could be louder so again it sticks it in the reader's mind makes it sound really really bad okay power of three's in the gray gray color and in the yellow color we've got alliteration so stinky stain revolted and repulsed terrible train patient passages again makes it brings attention to the phrase makes it sound really bad sticks in the reader's head okay well now we're going to look at sentence starters again in the exam you need to have sentence lengths to be different and you need to start sentences in a different way to get higher grade it's really boring to start sentences with a or the or i all the time so this doing this will push up your grades okay one way to do this is by starting with two adjectives so for example bored and confused comma the boy stared at his exam or creepy and dark the man went back into the house so again just saying the boy stared at his exam is pretty boring if you add bored and confused comma it really does paint a image in the reader's mind again the man went back into his house is a boring sentence but also creepy and dark comma also gives us more information so it tells us something sinister is going on here remember you need a comma after these if you start the sentence with them okay another way is by starting with a word which ends in ing so for example sprint into the line usain bolt won the gold so again comma afterwards hoping the man held his lottery ticket so again it gives more information it's not just saying the man held his lottery ticket for example in our head he might be a bored man waiting for his lottery ticket but hoping almost gives us an image of him pleading almost tapping his foot impatiently to find out the lottery results again it's a lot more interesting than just saying the man held his lottery ticket okay starting with a word that ends in li so for example happily the girl ran to the play park happily comma sarcastically the boss asked for more information so again it's more imaginative it's more creative it's more interesting but it also gives more information again remember you need a comma okay and here they are all together so starting with an li starting with ing start with an adjective or start with two adjectives remember if you do all of the any of them comma afterwards but it's a hell of a lot more interesting than just saying i couldn't move shocked i couldn't move yeah 
the teenager walked off doesn't give us more, any information but moaning comma the teenager walked off is going to do get us a lot higher grades okay so quickly go through them so back to my letter starting sentence with ly i've got five or six but really good and a really nice method to structure your answer as well because you will get marks for linking your paragraphs okay i would in the exam on a lot of the questions so letter report speech whatever I would always start my paragraph with firstly, secondly, finally. The reason I would do this, it, first of all, it structures your answers, but it also links your paragraphs, and it also starts the paragraph in a nice way, and you will get marks for this. But I've also used words like stupidly, quickly, sadly, comma, you failed on this occasion. So again, I could have had the sentence, I had paid extra to reserve my seat, but adding stupidly, comma, I had paid extra to reserve my seat, tells the reader more information it tells the reader that Ambreen is regretting paying extra to reserve to see okay so starting sentence with ing so i've only got one yeah maybe you could have done a couple more but i've only got one so boarding the train comma i found to my annoyance it gives it gives a different kind of sentence so it's going to push my grades up okay so starting with two adjectives again i only did it once but revolted and repulsed, comma, I had no choice but to sit on the stain due to the crowd, the train being so overcrowded. So again, I've only done it once, but I've shown the examiner I can do it. It's a different kind of sentence starter, so again, it's going to push my grades up. Okay, so there's all the sentence starters put together, so ing, ly, two adjectives. So instead of doing starting every sentence with the or i, I've got eight or nine different sentence starters that will tell the examiner I know what I'm doing and I'm going for top marks. Okay, so I've told you firstly, secondly, finally, but here's other ways you can start sentences. So if you do one point and you're going to say about something different, maybe you could say in comparison or however, or if you're carrying on with the same point, you could say in addition to this, for instance, likewise. And then we've got on the left down here, we've got the ones that we've talked about. So firstly, secondly, thirdly finally okay so we talked about sentence starters but we also want to have different lengths of sentences good punctuation so in the yellow here we can see that and the yellow and green I've got a few short sentences so I've got quite a few long sentences and end of my second paragraph I put I was furious so using this short sentence is going to up my grades because it's showing the examiner that I've got different lengths of sentences but it also draws attention to the fact that the woman was so angry again in the green here I've got a long long sentence how can you justify the 85 pound ticket for such a perfectly poor journey surely you wish to provide an exceptional service and then I've gone straight afterwards with a short sentence sadly you failed on this occasion again showing the examiner I can do different lengths of sentence but also bringing attention to the fact that the comp the train company have done so poorly okay also in the top paragraph again we're going back to that point that I'd like you to try and get into every question or get into every first paragraph whatever letter you can get you can get this into your intro let me get straight to the point I've used a colon so I'm going to go up the grades I'm going to go up the mark scheme because I've used more advanced punctuation than just full stops and commas and question marks Okay, so here's a letter checklist. Okay, so this is the last little part of the video. All the things on here are going to help you. So, if you, this will be available on bpcenglish.wordpress.com. So, here's the forest. If you can't remember the forest, we've got the letter structure in the top right hand corner. We've got little things here to remember we need to do. So remember, plan your letter and plan your deforest. Make sure you've got two addresses with capitals. You need to do at least one and a half pages, but you should be going for two pages. Use range of punctuation, including the colon in the first paragraph. Use wide vocab. Use a range of connectives, so firstly, secondly, finally, however. Link the paragraphs again, firstly, secondly, finally. Do different kinds of sentences, so long sentences, short sentences. In your intro, try to get, let me get straight to the point, colon in your intro. Again, it's going to up your grades because you're using more advanced punctuation, but also it's just a good sentence, gets to the point. So, create facts and statistics. 95% of customers said they would never use that train company again. Use an appropriate closing. So, if you started with dear sir, end with yours faithfully. Try to start sentences with two adjectives or words with L-Y or I-N-G to make your sentence starters really interesting and up your grades. Okay, so that's it on the video. Hopefully that's really helped you to understand how to make a really, really great letter for your exam. Hope this has been useful. Thanks very much.